morning. I'm Kenneth Moten. And I'm Janae Norman. Here are the top five things to know this Thursday. Number one, Hurricane Dorian. It grew overnight into a Category 3 storm as it takes aim at the southeast. By tonight, Dorian could make landfall in the Carolinas where they're bracing for more than a foot of rain and a storm surge as high as eight feet. Power outages are already reported in South Carolina this morning. More than a million people are under evacuation orders. Meanwhile, the extent of the devastation Dorian left behind in the Bahamas is still coming into focus as the death toll rises to at least 20. More than 200 people have been reported missing. Search and rescue missions are ongoing. An estimated 70,000 people are in need of life-saving assistance. Number two, a developing story. A wildfire in Riverside County, California has exploded in size. Local residents were ordered to evacuate as nearly 1,000 acres burned. Schools in the area are closed today. A woman posted this photo. Look at that. Flames on both sides of the highway as she escaped. Heavy winds are, have been fueling that fire. On to number three now, a federal judge has ruled that the database the FBI uses to identify known or suspected terrorists violates the due process rights of the people on that watch list. Nearly two dozen Muslim U.S. citizens and a Muslim civil rights group who sued the government are declaring victory. Number four now, the car sharing service Lyft is facing a lawsuit brought by more than a dozen women who claim the company is allowing sexual predators to stay on the road. The 14 women say they were raped or sexually assaulted in incidents dating back to 2015. One woman says she was attacked in Salt Lake City. She says she reported it the same day, but the suspect was allowed to keep driving. My safety was violated, and the consequences affect me every day, mentally, emotionally, and physically. I am overwhelmed with grief by Lyft's negligence to keep its riders safe. They knew about this issue, but they've done nothing about it. They chose to do nothing about it. Lyft released a statement calling the incident terrifying and said it's committed to the safest possible experience. And finally, number five, a new report finds a record number of Hollywood movies last year featured lead actors who were either women or people of color. The survey by USC found two movies were particular standouts, Disney's Black Panther and Crazy Rich Asians. Still, the survey found Hollywood is falling short in representing the LGBTQ population as well as the disabled. A lot more to talk about coming your way. It's more in America. Good morning. Let's get right to that big story. Hurricane Dorian taking aim at the coast of the Carolinas. So here's where the storm is right now. Authorities in South Carolina say they're bracing for historic flooding and up to 700,000 power outages with hurricane force wind gusts, even though the center of Dorian is far off the coast right now. And here's the projected forecast. The storm is about to turn northeast and could make landfall in North Carolina tonight as a category two. All eyes are on the storm surge, which could reach eight feet high in some areas, battering the coast. Up to 15 inches of rain could fall. ABC's Megan Tefrizian is in Charleston, South Carolina, where the winds are picking up. Megan. Yeah, they certainly are. Janae and Kenneth, it's gotten stronger overnight. We've experienced heavy rain and wind. And in this flood-prone city of Charleston, the biggest concern right now is the storm surge. Officials urging residents here to shelter in place. Dorian re-strengthening to a Category 3 hurricane overnight and might make landfall as it inches closer to Georgia and the Carolinas. Boarded up and packed and so I'm on my way. A hurricane warning is in effect for the entire South Carolina and North Carolina coastline, which is set to face the brunt of the storm and a dangerous storm surge of up to eight feet. South Carolina's governor asking anyone who lives in the evacuation zone to get out. It is the water that kills people. It is the wall of it is that is the real danger. FEMA setting up operations at Fort Bragg, collecting more than 250 trailers filled with food and water. And the Coast Guard moving operations inland, ready for potential rescues once the storm passes. The preparedness part is pretty much over. Uh, we're in the wait and uh, see what kind of complex it, uh, complexity we're going to be dealing with. Dorian passing through Florida, toppling trees at its peak, knocking out power to some, but the Sunshine State, for the most part, was spared. And here in South Carolina, we're already getting reports of power outages here at this hotel. The lights have been flickering on and off all morning. Charleston is known as a tourist town where a lot of people are typically walking around, but the last few days here, it's been a ghost town. Uh, the city already experiencing a high tide, so with this rain and a potential storm surge, we could expect several feet of flooding before this is all over.
Kenneth Janae. All right, Megan, and we will be watching as Dorian moves up the coast. Thank you for joining us this morning. And Dorian has forced the cancellation of thousands of flights this week as travelers wrap up their summer vacations. The main airport in Wilmington, North Carolina, will reopen to commercial flights tomorrow. Charleston International Airport has shut down operations until tomorrow morning as well. And Jacksonville International has canceled all flights until further notice. Dorian has claimed at least 20 lives in the Bahamas and many more are feared dead amid the scramble to rescue those still stranded. ABC's Marcus Moore got a look at a busy hospital in Nassau where an urgent effort is underway to treat injured survivors. Many of them were plucked from hard hit areas in the Abaco Islands inundated by the devastating storm surge. And rescuers are also tending to many frightened and dehydrated pets displaced by the storm. This morning, the rush to rescue the stranded and get aid to more than 70,000 people across the Bahamas. <laughs> Members of the U.S. Coast Guard carried the injured one by one to a waiting helicopter. There you go. You're good. AccuWeather observed this woman, Angela Cook, being airlifted for treatment. She was pinned under a roof for 17 hours. Ease it right down. And it's not just the military. Neighbors helped this elderly woman. Abaco and Grand Bahama Islands, known for their golf courses and resorts, are now a muddy landscape of splintered and flooded out homes, where boats block roads and planes have been tossed around. Most people have lost everything. Relief efforts are increasing from the Red Cross, the UN, and U.S., which dispatch search and rescue teams and Marine Corps Osprey aircraft. The government here has sent police, doctors, and nurses to hard-hit islands. Where are you? that no effort will be spared in rescuing those still in danger, feeling though, feeding those who are hungry, and providing shelter to those who are without homes. Renowned chef Jose Andres and his nonprofit World Central Kitchen is flying missions from Florida, delivering hot food across the Bahamas. His goal, 10,000 meals. One bright spot in all of the heartache here, an emotional family reunion in the midst of a nationwide crisis. The prime minister thanking the international community, including the U.S. I also want to thank the first responders from the international community, and especially those from the United States, for their exceptional assistance. And tourism, obviously very big for the Bahamas. The prime minister encouraged people to consider visiting the islands that were not affected by Dorian. Well, social media platforms are filled with questions about why cruise lines aren't sending their ships to the Bahamas to bring emergency supplies in and transport survivors out. The cruise lines say most ports are too small to handle those gigantic ships. Gigantic ships and the waters around the islands are not yet safe to navigate. For now, cruise lines including Carnival, Royal Caribbean and Disney have donated millions of dollars to the relief effort in the Bahamas. Police say residents should be wary of what washes up on beaches during Hurricane Dorian. The warning comes after someone found a bag filled with 15 kilos of cocaine found along the beach in Melbourne. Police say there may be more out there. They say you shouldn't touch any random bags or packages. Powder cocaine can cause an overdose if it gets into the pores of your skin. You probably wouldn't think about that, so be careful out there. Well, coming up, one man's mission to change the world. The activist who's battling ALS and fighting for Medicare for all. But first, the urgent new health alert, a second urgent death in the U.S. now being linked to vaping. The details after this. Welcome back. Now to a developing story. Health officials in another state are sounding the alarm about vaping. This time, it's a man in Oregon who's become the second person in the country to die from a vaping-related illness. Doctors say this patient used products from a legal marijuana shop. This morning, a second death now linked to vaping. Doctors in Oregon say the middle-aged man smoked marijuana through a vape pen, developed breathing problems, and then died at the hospital. The CDC is now investigating 215 cases of pulmonary illness in 25 states, most of them involving teens and young adults. Not all our patients are having or express pulmonary symptoms. Typically, the fevers are 101 to 104. So they over, it's very similar to like a flu-like illness. Last month, health officials in Illinois announced the country's first death related to e-cigarettes. This latest death in Oregon is the first linked to a vaping product purchased at a legal marijuana dispensary. So far, there is no uh, specific link to a certain device, a certain uh, drug, a certain additive that links these cases. 
Doctors say it's unclear what exactly is sending people to the hospital, but a new study in mice found that inhaling the vapor from an e-cigarette raised the risk for viral infections. And now Michigan is banning the sale of flavored e-cigarettes in stores and online, the first state to take such a sweeping action. The governor accuses companies of using candy flavoring, such as bubble gum and Fruit Loops, to hook children on nicotine. This is a health crisis that we're confronting, and it would never be permitted if it was cigarettes, but we're letting these companies target our kids, appeal to our kids, and deceive our children. This morning, the American Vaping Association is calling Michigan's ban a shameless attempt at a backdoor prohibition that they say would send thousands of ex-smokers back to smoking cigarettes. And store managers are criticizing the ban, saying it prevents anyone from getting their hands on flavored vaping products. To jump in and say the whole vaping industry needs to shut down because of this is a little far-fetched. So the name of the dispensary connected to that death in Oregon has not been named. Under the law there in Oregon, marijuana dispensaries cannot sell products that have not been tested by state-approved labs. Well, our other major headline this morning is the investigation to that deadly dive boat fire off the coast of California. Investigators are hoping pieces of the boat's wreckage pulled from the water by the FBI late yesterday will provide new clues into what started the fire. They've also interviewed the captain and some crew members. Four of the five crew members tested negative for alcohol. The fifth is injured and could not be tested. Drug test results are pending. Searchers have recovered 33 bodies and have suspended the search for one victim who is still missing. The full investigation is expected to take a year or more. Authorities in Lubbock, Texas, executed a search warrant at the home of a man believed to have sold the assault rifle used by the Odessa mass shooter. The man has not been charged or arrested. The private sale of that assault rifle allowed the gunman to avoid having to undergo a background check. A police officer who was wounded during that mass shooting is out of the hospital. You can hear the crowd applauding Zach Owens there. He suffered multiple gunshot wounds during Saturday's shooting. Doctors say his most serious injury came from glass shards that entered his left eye. Officer Owens is heading to Alabama to be treated by an eye specialist. And the Trump administration has announced plans to roll back regulations that would have required the use of more energy efficient light bulbs. The president told reporters he canceled the phase out of incandescent light bulbs because he said the energy being saved is not worth it. Environmentalists say it could lead to an increase in greenhouse gas emissions. Well, let's take a break from the news and check our notifications. Yep, starting with this image that perfectly sums up what so many Brits are feeling about the Brexit chaos. A lawmaker there caught slouching in Parliament and the Internet can't get enough of it turning him into a meme. Of course he was turned into a meme. Actually, it's meme after meme after meme. Doesn't stop. Just, just slouching. He doesn't him? care. Can you blame him? Mm -mm. Uh, and back on this side of the pond, workers at a hotel in Montana heard some noises coming from the women's bathroom. Went to go check it out and found this little guy, little bear cub. Hmm. Wandered in there and then just wanted to hang out, take a little nap on the sink. Barely noticed him on that sink. Yeah. Hey, well, next up, a woman visiting the famous cathedral there in Paris made a mistake. Put, Whoa. Putting her phone down in the wrong place. Just slides down the Ooh. concrete wall there. Fast, too. I bet she that lost a lot is gone. of pictures from that trip. Mm -hmm. And some dogs get excited about going on a walk, but this pup found a better way to get around. Spinning around on a scooter. Doggy scooter. Yeah. Hmm. They're just like us. <laughs> hey, a British man says he didn't get his money's worth from his can of baked beans. Steve Smith opened the last container of Heinz baked beans in his house to find all that juice and just one bean inside. He posted the image on Twitter with a message. I enjoy bean juice as much as the next person. But when I opened a can this evening, I was hoping for more than one bean. Heinz has reached out to him. Could you imagine? No. The apocalypse and like you get some canned goods and this is your last can and like there's no more food around. The zombies are around. And it's just bean soup. And it's bean soup. Sad day. I would lick the can though. And a Jacksonville man came up with an unusual way to protect one of his cars from Hurricane Dorian. Patrick Elridge's smart car is now sitting in the kitchen. Hmm. His wife Jessica says the move indoors started as a bit of a joke to see if the car could fit in the house. The one drawback apparently is they have to maneuver their way around it to cook and eat dinner, but there appears to be enough room, though. I, I, they made it work. That's a pretty small car. The dogs the are confused. Yeah, the dogs are like, huh? what's going on here? Yeah. 
Hey, moving on now, while the Democratic presidential candidates spar over the contentious issue of health care reform, one particularly powerful voice is being heard from an activist on the sidelines. But it's a voice that's growing stronger every day. Here's ABC's Juju Chang. Every day, Adi Barkin hopes yeah, yeah. that what little time he has left to live shame, shame. will count for something. Fighting for justice gives me purpose. I much prefer to focus on the struggle for our democracy than to focus on ALS. ALS has already robbed him of his ability to walk and talk, to play with his son, hold his wife's hand. But the deadly disease has also transformed him into one of the most influential voices for Medicare for All. Healthcare is a right. You're playing a very important uh, role. What does Medicare for All mean to you? We all get high quality, comprehensive health care through Medicare with no copays or deductibles or premiums. Ten years ago, Medicare for All was a fringe idea, and now it enjoys the support of a majority of the American people. A kingmaker for Democratic presidential hopefuls. You know, Adi, I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> now, I want to have a chance to tell the story about my friend, Adi Barkin. But Adi's fame started out with a fluke. You can be an American hero. You really can. On his flight home after being arrested protesting the 2017 tax bill, he bumped into then Arizona Senator Jeff Flake and pleaded with him to vote against the bill. You can save my life. Please remember this conversation. Flake eventually let him down, but their interaction went viral. Since his ALS diagnosis at age 32, he's grown physically weaker, but his political voice has grown even stronger. Health care is not treated as a human right in the United States of America. Spearheading protests on Capitol Hill. All right, I'm going to knock on your door. Chasing down opposing politicians. Senator, I'm dying. Come on. Why are you running away from me? That's what people power looks like. Just one social media post raising more than $4 million to oust Republican Senator Susan Collins. Paralyzed from the neck down, at 35, Audi now communicates slowly with his eyes, so we had to send questions in advance. What are the hardest parts of ALS? 100 times every day, I despair at my inability to tickle and chase Carl, to comfort him in the middle of the night, and to scold him when he dumps his dinner plate for the fifth night in a row. A lot of people are uncomfortable with the idea of a terminal illness. I am not shy about death. I really just want my life and death to have meant something. His wife, Rachel, fully embraces his life's mission, despite knowing the toll that it takes on his failing body. When he got back from the tour last summer, his voice was noticeably worse. We kind of lost that, that time when we could have been um, speaking more. Overall, it's given him so much strength. It was just three years ago the college sweethearts had welcomed their baby boy, Carl. After Yale Law School, Adi was fighting for low-income workers' rights. Rachel teaching English at UC Santa Barbara. Oh, I really remember one morning thinking to myself, how could life get any better than this? And when did the storm clouds approach? Adi had been having some pain and weakness in his left hand. I was diagnosed with ALS today. Suddenly, we were wondering if Adi would see Carl go to kindergarten. Will Carl ever remember Adi and that sort of thing? Adi admits that early on, he felt lost. Through the darkness and through the despair, what lit your fire again? When America elected a racist, sexist kleptocrat to the presidency, he and the Republicans did more and more to undermine our democracy and our social fabric. I decided I had to throw myself into the fight. On this plane is... Arizona Senator Jeff Flake. The first battle played out on social media with that viral video dubbed Flakes on a Plane, instantly giving him a powerful platform. So let's see what happens when we get on the plane. All right, let's see. That voice, fellow passenger Liz Jaff. The two had just met for the first time boarding the plane. Out on the front. I don't think you're supposed to be filming anything on the airplane. Jaff then films the in-flight encounter with the former senator. You can be an American hero. You really can. You're you, already there. You're, you're halfway there. If the boat matches the speech, think about, think about the, um, 
the legacy that you will have for my son and your grandchildren. What we saw on the plane was a human interaction. I mean, everybody on the plane was crying at the end of it. You can save my life. Please, please remember this conversation. When Adi lands from Santa Barbara, we are at over a million views on this video. Which so is, within a couple hours? Within a couple of hours. I mean, insane. Jaff, an Obama staffer turned political consultant, became his impromptu new partner in crime. And he said, I think we should start a super PAC, but we should do it for the little people. They named their super PAC Be a Hero, raising more than $2 million and supporting Democrats across the country during the 2018 midterm election. That's why Adi and I are asking you to vote for Katie Hill on November 6th. We cut ads. They were run in 100 districts. We won every single race we ran our ads in. We flipped a bunch. Speaker Nancy Pelosi even thanking Adi for helping win back the House for Democrats. And nobody has been a stronger messenger than you. Our hero. Some observers would say that you're exploiting yeah. his disease Absolutely. for political gain. Absolutely. Because if the only way that we're going to force people to talk about these issues is with somebody like Adi, that he has to be this sick for people to pay attention, then we need to do it. I would give anything to just be a happy father and husband. This is not exploitation. We have to be able to tell our human stories if we want our democracy to be responsive to us as individual human beings. Those personal stories, front and center in his new show, Uncovered, Healthcare Conversations with Audi Barkin. Only Sanders and Warren support Medicare for All. Hey. And yet all the major Democratic candidates, except for former Vice President Biden, have agreed to sit down with Audi. I know that your father had Parkinson's disease. I recently read an article where you opened up about your mother's death turning a tedious policy debate into a shared human experience. Kamala Harris is so strong, and she broke down when she talked about her mother. You've written that the day your mother was diagnosed with cancer was one of the worst days of your life. That was one of the worst days of my life, truly. Elizabeth Warren also broke down. Uh, Cory Booker, Julian Castro. You just see the candidates suddenly realize that these are the people that they are protecting when they want to run for president. You want to remind them of them. Why did you want to create a show like Uncovered? As I watched the first presidential debates, I found myself really frustrated. The conversation that the country saw was little more than a bunch of shouted 30-second sound bites. I thought people deserved better. One, two, three. Audie's crusade has a sense of urgency. Just two days after our interview, he was rushed to the hospital. I think he can keep fighting. I think you can keep going and have a meaningful life. Adi details that meaningful life in his new book, Eyes to the Wind, part political manifesto, part personal memoir, in which the best chapter still lies ahead. Are you ready for another baby? I don't know that anyone can be ready, but to the extent that you can be. I'm super jazzed. It's gonna be great. Our lives are so crazy now, with a toddler and with ALS. Another baby will be a piece of cake. His daughter is due this November, but in his fragile state, next November, Election Day 2020, is far from guaranteed. It's so hard to think about Adi not being here. I can so vividly picture what our life would be like if Adi didn't have ALS. What's the legacy that you want to leave behind? At the end of the day, I want to be remembered as someone who fought to make the world a little more fair and just for all, and most of all, I just want Carl and his sister to be proud of me. Just incredible there. And as he really fights there, you he may have lost his physical voice, but his voice is still being heard and being heard by so many people. Doing all he can to make a difference. Mm -hmm. Coming up, what you need to know for the day ahead. Plus your answers to our question of the day about a miniature horse on a plane. We'll be right back. All right, here's what to watch out for today. Hurricane Dorian is moving north as it lashes the Carolinas. Low-lying areas are expected to flood. All the while, the U.S. Coast Guard rushes into the Bahamas to rescue people from the devastation Dorian left behind there. President Trump will award basketball legend Jerry West the Presidential Medal of Freedom. The 81-year-old played 14 seasons in the NBA, winning a championship with the Lakers in 1972, and spent many years as a coach. 
GM and executive in the league. Vice President Pence meets with UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson in London, where the new Prime Minister is struggling to advance his plans to leave the European Union. Pence has said that the U.S. stands with Britain in its decision to leave the EU. And don't forget to set your fantasy football lineups. The NFL season begins tonight. When the Chicago Bears, the Bears, the Bears, the Bears, the Bears, host the Green Bay Packers in the first game of the season. Stay tuned to ABC News Live as we track Hurricane Dorian and all our top stories in the debrief. And watch the briefing room for a breakdown of the latest headlines in politics. So for our question of the day, the NFL season's kicking off. Yep. So is it time? It's time for our way too early predictions. Yep. Who do you think is going to win the Super Bowl? Tell us what you think in the comments or tweet us at ABC News Live. Uh, maybe we'll give you a shout-out in February if you get it right. Uh, where are we going to put that information to remember? Well, Somebody might. Yeah. Um, you, what do you think? The Saints. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say the Eagles. There you go. Or as they say in Philadelphia, the Eagles. There you have it. Yesterday, we watched this video of a miniature horse, a service animal, on a plane from Chicago to Omaha. Name's Flirty. Flirty was the main attraction on that flight. His owner suffers from depression, severe anxiety, and PTSD. She's also allergic to dogs, the most common service animal choice. So we asked, what, we asked you, what are your thoughts about passengers being allowed to bring mini horses on a plane? Here's what you had to say. One viewer on YouTube said, horse on a plane? I have a severe dander allergy toward animals. If I had been on that flight, I'd be the new owner of that airline. Someone else said, what's the difference between a horse or a dog when a horse is doing the same job as a dog? I don't care if a horse is aboard an airplane. So another comment said, if the horse is trained and certified, it should totally be allowed. The person who needs the service animal gets what they need, and I get to look at a cute horse the entire flight. Win-win. And someone posted, this service need is getting out of control. What's next? A snake on a plane? LOL. Oh, that's a good one. I don't was want to snake on a plane. Was that? Was it? Was it Samuel L? Jackson, did you leave that? Samuel Jackson, did you, you leave that? It was you, wasn't it? That's it from us this Thursday. Tomorrow's Friday, guys. Um, it sure is. Have a great day. We will see you tomorrow.